Hello, everyone, and welcome to another weekly workshop with GoMobi.Work. My name is Wade Bruffy, and I am the co-founder and CEO of GoMobi.Work, and I am joined by my co-founder and our chief coaching officer, Mr. Zoltan Sarda. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, everybody, wherever you happen to be. Um, I'm glad you could join us today. Um, and this is one of Wade and my favorite topics that uh, we're going to share with you a little bit of our process and how we think about working with other uh, companies, but we're going to also um, do a little work with our own, uh, sort of as a model for you guys. Yes, that is going to be really fun. Uh, we figured why not workshop it live with you all. So that is something um, we're, we're, I think typically when we've approached these conversations in the, we've, I think this is our 14th one, um, we have approached it in a way of really trying to um, talk about some stuff that we find very important and not so much about our own individual process always. We talk about a lot of the things that we think about and what we coach leaders and organizations on, but we haven't necessarily pulled back the curtain and shown you directly something that we do with a customer. So today we are going to do that. So this is a very good video uh, to be watching and we hope you enjoy the process and are able to do this yourselves. All right, there we go, let's see. Very good. Okay, so give me one moment just to resize this here because for our people who are watching afterwards. Okay, there we go. All right, so we are going to be speaking today about guiding principles. And this is one of the most foundational things that Zoltan and I cover with our customers. And the reason for that is because these guiding principles are foundational and they are also um, really one of the things that are the most helpful in everything that all the tools in our tool belt, we really are excited about um, the way that these show up in our customers' workflow. And we find that when companies and organizations do this really, really effectively, they are able to dramatically improve their performance, their worker well being, their team cohesion, and just so many other things. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. What else am I forgetting, Zoltan? Yeah, just, just, uh, just the, 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 the well being, as you mentioned, but also just like culture of the organization. Mm -hmm you know, building an effective culture is sort of understanding how we work together. And so this is a key part of that. Yeah. And I think a lot of, um, a lot of smaller companies, especially companies that are started by uh, maybe it's, it's a closely knit founder led team. Uh, the, the belief is that the, the founders core values and the founders principles are going to scale because they're still in the driver's seat at the, at the top level of the company. But that's a really common misconception and that we actually find that we need to develop structures in order to keep these things. In order, if we wanna see these things, we need to develop structures to perpetuate them. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And I think that's a really good point, Wade. Like if, you know, if there's six people sitting around a table, yes. you're really close in, uh, in alignment around what you're talking about. But once you move away from that table, it's, it gets harder and harder. So having systems in place that support support that very thing that happens at that small group is, is really core. Yep, yep, being like a bigger company. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we wanted to start with is this quote, and I am a personally really huge fan of this book because it's very well articulates a lot of uh, the reasons that principles are powerful. And that's this book, Principles by Ray Dalio. And in that book, he writes that principles are fundamental truths that serve as the foundations for behavior that gets you what you want out of life. They can be applied again and again in similar situations to help you achieve your goals. So the thing that I wanted to clue into here is that really principles are about behaviors that help you get what you want. And that can be applied to our personal principles, how we operate in the world. So whether that's kindness or uh, love or whatever it is that we effectiveness, some way that we see ourselves, but we too often don't apply these and think about them in the context of our, our organization, because our organization also wants to get something out of its life. So that's what we're going to be targeting these towards today. And we're going to be doing a workshop at the end, like exercise for you that'll guide you through that part. Absolutely. And we add the term guiding principles to, to yeah, this. That's right. We think of, I mean, he's Ray Dalio says this here, but it's like the principles are like your roadmap, right? 
they they help guide you to where you're going. That's exactly right. So we have guiding principles and fundamentally guiding principles are a set of shared agreements and shared agreements about what success or excellence looks like to us, how we work with and treat each other, and also how we handle challenges and explore new opportunities, and also what we know to be true and our standards for being. And so when we talk about what these guiding principles are, is, and, and, and the shared agreement is something that we really find powerful is that guiding principles are something that we all have to buy into. Because if we're, if we're saying something is our principle, it's one of our most closely held things. And by that very nature of it, we agree with that thing. We're saying, I'm behaving this way because I think it's the right way to do things. And if we're in an organization where these agreements are not shared, that is going to create dissonance so we're going to talk a little bit about how that can show up for us a little bit later, but uh, that's something that I wanted to just touch on there briefly. And so the role of guiding principles, uh, I will actually um, say to begin with that they're collaborative. And I think we were just, just to kind of pick up on where we were just talking about is that in order for the guiding principles to be successful, every member of the team has to contribute to them. And whether that's contributing to the creation of them, which we strongly uh, would advocate for and, ad and guide our customers through a process of doing that. But also contribute contribution also looks like um, it also looks like uh, making sure that we um, uphold the guiding, the, the guiding principles every day. So I'll tell you, you want to take the next couple. Yeah. So um, again, and they also provide a roadmap for uncertainty. I think one of the things um, in, particularly like with manager coaches, right? Um, is when we're, when, when we're not sure about the direction, we did, we did a talk uh, last week about, you know, how do you coach when you don't know the answer? So uncertainty can lead you kind of feeling adrift and not quite sure where to go, but these are like your anchor. Uh, they can be applied in a variety of situations and um, they really, you know, if, if, if you're uncertain and you step you tend to step away from some, some of these core principles that you have decided to focus on. You're more likely to, uh, you know, lead, lead people maybe in a direction that's not helpful um, or go in a direction that's not helpful for yourself. So the, really they're that roadmap or that anchor. They also inform the culture. So um, I don't know the way you put this in, the culture is formed in the micro moments of how we treat each other and, and how, how we behave. So it's really getting down to a granular level of defining what these things look like. The more micro the definitions are, the more we can see agreement on them, the more we can, uh, these actually become usable. Uh, and then there's that aligning to our most important priorities. So, you know, again, we did a talk about, you know, the, uh, our espoused theory of action, what we say we do versus our enacted theory of action. We want to always be working to bring those closer together, um, and guiding principles will help us uh, align around those important priorities that we said. Um, and then this key piece: they evolve. They they should be evolving. They're never finished. We're, you know, if we said twenty years ago, okay, we got it. We know what we're doing. Uh, this is how we do things, and we're going to do that forever. That's not a very uh, highly functioning company um, because new information comes in. We hire new people with new perspectives and skills and, and backgrounds. There's new research being done every day on how uh, the, the best of most effective practices for companies. So they need the new information, new perspectives, new ideas need to be integrated in um, on a regular basis. So a couple of things we've touched on it here already, but again, just this importance of guiding uh, guiding principles. They they generate clarity and aligned action. Um, and, and, you know, that idea that aligned action is everybody is moving and pulling in the same direction. If there's not clarity and there's not alignment, you've got forces moving in every single direction. Uh, we've, and we've, we've used that playground game tug of war as an example. Like if, if you have, if you've ever played tug of war, you know, that the secret is you have to pull everybody at the same time. So if yeah. you had one person pulling to the left, one person pulling the wrong way. 
I saw actually a funny video online recently of somebody like not knowing how to play and they were pulling the wrong way and everybody in the, their t- team turns around. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. what misalignment is like. Absolutely. And, and so when you think about that in the hundreds of different little things that happen in a company every single day, if there's uh, little slight tugs to the, to the left or right, you're going to be, have all kinds of problems. Um, and again, as I said, this is that discovery between what we say, what we do, and what we actually do. Um, this idea of well-being, uh, Wade and I talk about the WTF syndrome a little bit. You know, every person has worked in a company where they come out of meeting and they go, WTF, like, what? where did that come from? You know, when did we, when did we decide to move in that direction? Why, why did we not do this? This is what we said we were going to do, and now we're not doing it. Um, that leads to lack of buy-in it leads to people being disheartened um it, it causes all kinds of morale problems and poor culture and then we also did a talk about self-determination theory which is one of our core pieces and which is that idea that um that motivation um and is based on this idea of self-determination which means you know people have autonomy they uh, have a strong sense of competence in what they're doing and then there's also a high uh, connection to the meaning of what's happening. And core to that self-determination theory is that when people are existing in that state, it's almost like a state of flow. There's uh, a lot of well-being that comes out of that. And if we don't know, you know, if I'm, if Wade is my manager and he's telling me one thing and then another manager is telling me something else and somebody else is telling me something else, I don't know where to build my confidence. I don't know where I can take uh, autonomous action because it's not clear. And so this idea of alignment uh, in what we're saying we're doing is is key. And then also just the basis of effective excellence. If everybody understands what we're aiming for and how we want what our work to look for our customers, for each other, um, we're, what we create, how we exist is going to be much more effective and excellent. Yeah, that's so well said, Zoltan. So the next thing that we wanted to speak about is really these barriers that we sometimes see. And to use another quote from Ray's book, uh, he writes, while all of us, while almost all of us quickly agreed upon the principles intellectually, many still struggle to convert what they had agreed to intellectually into effective action. This is because their habits and emotional barriers remain stronger than their reasoning. So the thing here is that we are just so, so very human. And no matter how much we want to be effective, be effective, and no matter how much we want to be at the top of our game, and no matter how much we try to think about this stuff and, and really work at it, we're going to fall short. And so part of being a very principled person, part of being a very principled organization is constantly evaluating where we're doing well on things and where we're coming up short. And that requires a very, very frank evaluation. And I just listened to a great podcast from our friends over at Purpose and Performance Group, um, which we'll link in the in the notes here, about where they were speaking with a, a business leader about values. And they were saying that the how to know that you're really a value-driven person is that you recognize when you haven't acted from one of your values. It's actually less about, and it's all, it is about the conscious choice of, hey, we're going to do things this way. And that's exactly what we're, you know, we're going to work on a workshop in a minute here to figure out what are the ways that we actually want to act. But it also involves recognizing when we're not acting in that way and being okay with that assessment. So what we are, like, for example, one of the things that they they said in the podcast was that if we have a principle of fearlessness, we need to measure how well or not well we're measuring up to 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 fearlessness. So they might be, be that might look like uh, where did I hold myself back and act and not take an action out of fear this month, or um, what did I do that was brave this month? If 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 I'm looking at the opposite of of fear is courage, so uh, trying to assess those things. And so we wanted to talk with you about uh, the ways that we think about data collection. We've talked about this uh, in a previous talk um, where we think about data collection as a process being more efficient. So it's a really big pain if you were to say to your team, and this kind of happens in the form of the annual performance review once a year for most, most companies, 
it's a pain to go through and th- say, we need to sit down, think about everything that's happened in the past year, get a ton of as much information as we can. And it's this huge blitz. And then think about how we did on our values. Perhaps that's the question. Now, that is a process where 80% of the work is collecting all the information and 20% of the work is really analyzing that information in most cases. And that's really not what you want. You want 80% of the time to be spent saying, what does this mean to us? How do we make changes based on this information that we have? And you really want 20% of the time to be the data collection piece. So we need an efficient and collaborative data collection process. So in the, and what we always say is that this all comes down to the conversations that are happening in our organization. So we need the management, the leadership of the organization, whether it's your mid-level person or your executive level person uh, in your C-suite, that anytime that these people are having conversations with the people that are around them, that they report to, that report to them, that there is a way of capturing information on how we're doing. And it has to be something that's efficient and easy. So that's collaborative. We're doing it together every time we have a conversation by, na- by nature, multiple people, and then it's efficient. So something that we can easily just do so that it becomes 20% and we can spend 80% of our time actually thinking about what it means. So we also think that it's very important to create links between the guiding principles and the employee performance. So if we're just saying to our employees, hey, we need these OKRs to get done, we're gonna check in with you at once a week in our one-on-one about how the OKR is going. That is not necessarily a helpful conversation. It might be good to just benchmark where we're at. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not a bad idea to do a, a check-in, but it's also not thinking about what are the things that are actually contributing to us being successful with this process or not. Um, so we need to bring in those behavioral descriptions that are, that are going to help us actually coach and fine tune somebody's performance rather than just checking in with where they're at and just doing a status report. So and really, the, uh, it, it, once again, it just all comes down to looking at these things on a trend level. And so we need a way to target things and to gather and paint a picture of how this is going at every level of our organization, on every team and every department, however it looks for your company. Uh, without it, what they say, if, if you're not uh, measuring it, you can't change it. So uh, we need to be uh, looking at a way to really... Uh, note these trends and track the needs across our teams, which is going to improve, uh, you know, the way we, uh, our efficiency and effectiveness, but it's also going to improve the way we make changes in the future and where we need to focus our continuing development and who needs more support and who's doing well. So all these little things that can be answered. And we would say uh, one of our favorite ways of doing this is with our own product. So we have some uh, just pictures in here of what we have envisioned this to look like. And you can do this in a Google Sheet. You know, a lot of our customers have been doing this in a Google Sheet to some extent before they come on with us. But what we really are trying to do is on the right hand side of the screen here, you see how we would suggest you input things. So each one of these fields on our our form here is something that our, our customers configured to say we want to track these things. So Every time there's a there's a meeting, those are filled in really quick. And then on the left side, it gets shuttled over there to these insights. So that you're generating information at your team level, at your department level, at all levels of your organization to see what's going well and what could be changed. So something like this, where you're able to quickly capture data and then something that is going to do that work, most of that work for you to actually help you see the trends and present them to you in an easy way is an exceptional way of thinking about how to, how can we continue to refine our practice of these guiding principles, and and going back to that efficiency, yeah. point, I think like the key to this in, in my in my mind is that the, the further you get away from the conversation, the harder it is to document what happened. Yeah. So if you and I are having an O three. Um, and right at the end of it, we both complete this, like within, and really ideally this, we've designed this to take five minutes. So you just tap on five minutes to the O3, fill this out, then you've got a record. And next week when you come back, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to remember what we talked about last week. You've got totally. a record. Um, but the, you know, the idea is like immediately and in a very efficient short-term amount of time. So we're not wasting a lot of time, as you said, gathering data. Um, but we're using it. Yeah, I completely agree. 
So, um, and just to say uh, a final thought on that, we're never going to be perfect, but the idea here is to get as close as we possibly can to living to these principles and making our actions, uh, determining our actions based on them as we can. Part of that is going to be that we're always looking at where we're not doing it well enough. And that's the key thing. That's what high performance looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so are we ready to get into a little exercise? Let's do it, Zoltan. So we'll talk, um, we're going to talk a little bit about our process. Again, there's a lot of ways to do this. This is something that we found to be helpful. Um, we, uh, one of our principles, uh, we're not going to discuss it today, but um, how can, like, how can simple structures be created that have a lot of uh, effect in them? So the, the, the more simple the structure, the better, because you're going to, uh, we've used this term before, Simple structures beget complex behaviors, complex structures beget simple behaviors. So the simpler we can keep it, the better, the more um, outcome, the more effective outcome we're gonna have um, in this process. So um, our process is with a group and we've done this with different organizations. Sometimes we start with leadership and we do this exercise and then move um, to doing that the same exercise with employees while the, the leadership uh, team observes and then you bring both of the findings together and, and uh, create your, your guiding principles out, out of that. But with a group, you wanna choose a core value. You know, Companies have multiple core values. We're gonna do one of ours today. And you choose a core value that you wanna focus on. And then as a group, you're just brainstorming what that it looks like and sounds like. And what we say, what we say uh, to ourselves and to uh, companies that we're working with you step into a space and you see somebody executing that core value at a, you know that they're crushing it and they're doing it at a really high level that's like the epitome of performance that you want to see what would you see and what would you hear and we ask people to try and describe it as if you're watching a video or telling a story we want to be able to see specific behaviors um, we talked a little bit about um you know, about performance improvement uh, and deliberate practice. And one of those anecdotes that we talked about examples was uh, um, when the writer we were, we were referring to, Atul Gawande, talked about how his uh, surgery coach talked to him about, you know, when you're when you're making that incision, you need to raise your elbow a little bit. Like, like that's the level, like, you know, you can, you can visualize that, like right? raise your elbow just a little bit so that you can see it. So that that's the idea of like really telling a story or, or almost watching a video. You want to record everybody's ideas, get as many ideas out on the table, because what you'll see is that there's, uh, everybody has a slightly different opinion on things, but the more ideas you have together, the more, the more you're going to be able to bring them together into some Thing that everybody can agree on. You know, so uh, if we're in person with people, we just use post-its and charts and put them up all around, around the room. We're going to use a digital collaboration board here in a little bit. Jamboard those work really well too to get people, you know, you want everybody's voice in, in this and giving their opinions about what that looks like. Then you want to go through a process of organizing those descriptions. What are the categories? How do, which goes together? What's what's separate? And then you want to make them into those coherent, generalizable statement. So that idea that Wade was talking about earlier, that you can apply this principle to a lot of different situations when you have different uh, problems coming up. So the more generalizable the statement is, uh, the better. Uh, and then finally, you get a list, you know, for core value, if you can come up with four or five guiding principles, which really outline behaviors, um, come to agreement on that say, yeah, okay, so this might not be a perfect list and we're gonna keep looking at it, but for right now, this is what we're gonna agree on. And then finally, as we said earlier, revisiting those guiding principles regularly. So they're used weekly. Um, we talk to teams about, you know, have, a, have them printed on paper. And when you're sitting in your one-on-one, -on -one, your O3 or team meeting, have it on the table. So people are looking at it. Um, and then as you go through, and as we said, you know, new knowledge comes up, new approaches, new skills, make sure that you're revising them on a regular basis so that, and then it's also, you know, you hire new employees. They come in with, you know, they're, you didn't hire them because they're, they don't know anything. You hire them because they do know something. 
So like how, how does their new knowledge uh, fit with this and what can be changed and added? So this is our process. So what we're yes. going to look at, or go ahead. No, nope, I love it. Okay. So uh, we have a few core values here that uh, yep. more than these, but we've just put a few up as, as, uh, as examples. So, you know, first one, we are supportive. We deliver a solution that meets people where they are. And I'm sorry, my screen just went blank here. And intelligently, intelligently helps them get where they want to go. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> okay. Zoom, Zoom, classic troubles. So I just blinked here. Uh, the unifying force, uh, working with us gets everyone on the same page, aligned collaboratively. That's the idea of best possible communication. Uh, everything we do helps our clients become better communicators through all levels of the organization. And then, um, sorry, my, I'm trying to advance this and it's not going. There we go. Mitch, here we go. Come on. Thank you, Zoom. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose one of these. And we're going to say, we're going to focus on this one that we like, we are supportive. We deliver a solution that meets people where they are and intelligently helps them get where they would like to go. So what I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Cool. And I'm going to bring up our, uh, we've done. Some of the most fun sessions with our customers that we've had have come from this exercise. <laughs> Absolutely. So we hope that you enjoy this with your team also. And we're going to have to edit this piece out here, Wade, because I can't. Oh, yeah. I can't find the jam board. I know. No worries. Okay, there it is. Sorry about that. Okay, so we can uh, count down from five and five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so here we go. Here's our jam board. Here is our uh, our core value. We are supportive. We deliver a solution that meets people where they are and intelligently helps them get where they would like to go. So Wayne and I are going to just start talking and we're going to add some uh, ideas to this Jamboard about if you, if you and I are crushing it, mm -hmm. um, what does it look like and sound like, Wade? Um, I what comes to my mind right off the bat is that if we are crushing it in this core value, one of the things that we do is we really work to understand where, what is going on in somebody's organization when we first have a, a discussion with them. So that involves understanding what kind of programs they have in place already, um, what they do, what, what any sort of training that they have done for their team, um, some of the core foundational pieces of their culture right now. So we always ask to see people's core values. We ask, how do you talk about these core values? What are they, What is the significance of them in your organization today? Um, do people know these? Do you talk about these? So when we're when we when we're really being supportive, um, we're getting a really really good sense of the things that are happening in the business that we're speaking with. First of all. Part of that is also like, what's, what are the pain points? Like, why did they call us? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would even say maybe that that is a, that is like a, that's an even, we could go on a whole tangent about that. Okay. Well, let's put it here and then we can put it uh, maybe as another piece here. I also, so um, one of the things that we do or we try to do with practices is to make sure we're right. We check in. Uh, constantly to um, to see if our interpretation of what is being said is correct. Yeah, during the exercise? Yeah. Yeah. And, and when we're just when we're working with them. So like we've worked with a couple of companies where they were saying, so here's here's some things that we're we're seeing. So we just, you know, you and I then form a like we form an opinion or interpretation of what's being said, but we ask, is that, is this right? We don't just yeah. assume that we got it right. Yeah, um, that's so true. That's so true. I always say like, I don't want to put too many, like I don't want to put words in their mouth. Exactly. So I'm just yeah. going to that. Don't put words in their mouth. Okay. 
And we also, you also said pain points, right? So there's yeah, some... pain points. I think um, with this one, like we're always trying to target the way that we approach this program setup, because really what we're talking about right now is this is a foundational piece to the development programs that we help, that our software helps people build and manage. Mm -hmm. So because of the way that this is prefaces everything, we think about it in terms of what kinds of things do we, do these guiding principles need to address? Like what are the actual goals of this program and what kinds of things do we need to support is another way of saying that. So we want to get really specific in um, understanding where the gaps are, like what is the actual reason that things are not going as well as you maybe would hope in the company. Um, and then working from there because that's a foundational piece. And we don't want to just um, throw uh, the kitchen sink at people when it could be actually a much more targeted thing. Yeah, so if you do too much, it's overwhelming. Yeah, so I'm I'm, he I'm hearing your what you're also saying is like we it, when we do these brainstorms, it's just not all over the place. But we want to make sure that it's aligned to what the problem is, right? That's uh, exactly right. So, mm -hmm. like we have we've worked with a company where they uh, one of their goals, one of their pain points, was getting uh, employees to be more proactive in their work. So part of like when we're having these conversations, it's like, let's steering back to that. Let's make sure that we're going back to that. Is this, is this addressing this problem? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, other, exactly. th other things that are, you know, I'm going to. Yeah. Close this something, out something that I, that I love for this is that um, we really, the foundation of, why we do this and the way that we do this is because we want people in their work to feel supported. So the entire ethos of, of what we do is really based on a mentorship coaching mentality. And we are bringing that in, in really high performing organizations. There's a book um, by Josh Burson. He's an uh, HR consultant and he wrote a book called Irresistible. And in that book, is about irresist companies with irresistible cultures, the companies that people are dying to go and work for because every company dreams of having that culture, right? Where people are just, a, there's a line out the door to get in to work at this business. That is an incredible asset to the company um, mm -hmm. that they can attract talent like that. Um, and so what he talks about in that book is that th this, this attitude of coaching is really important and that the best organizations, the, the organizations that create irresistible culture, high-performing culture, they do coaching. Like inside their business is coaching. And what that looks like is that everybody in the company understands that it's part of their responsibility as a leader to help other people and support yeah. what they're trying to do and help other people reach their goals. Absolutely. And so that's really what another part of this um, – we are supportive value is, is that we want to help other companies create an organization like that. Yeah. And, and I think part of our work then is when we're working with the CEO, down to the employees, down to the managers, whatever it is, that we take that stance of, a, of an understanding, thoughtful, supportive mentor, right? Um, as, as we talk with them. I do think that, like, I mean, just you know, we, um, we are helpful. And I think one of those things is like, you know, little things like uh, respond to questions immediately. You know, when you, we get emails in from folks, it's like, um, you know, there's nothing like reaching out for support and then we're having to wait three days to get an answer. So like, right. uh, you know, right. responding to emails, to questions immediately, um, respond uh, with curiosity rather than ju judgment, right? Yeah, exactly. That's a huge piece. Like that idea that we're gonna find, like if 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 we're if we're not sure what's going on here, um, we're gonna approach it from that inquiry stance. It's like not instead of like I they didn't say that right or like I I don't get what they're talking about. It's like what. If I don't understand, that's on me. So I'm going to ask those questions and be curious about that. 
Yeah, right. We have to take accountability for for that as well. Um, I we are we're running up on time here, but I have one more. And before we get into anything, closing other thoughts. But um, one thing is that we, as far as being supportive, we are adamant that anytime we're in a coaching or supportive time, that no punitive action is going on during that time. That this development time is a sacred time and it's a, it's a protected environment where we are not at risk of being vulnerable. Vulnerability is key. It is taking place. Support to us has a lot to do with actually providing the environment where somebody is safe to grow. Yeah. And that involves vulnerability. Yeah. And if there, if there is a, a problem, right. Uh, that needs to be addressed then that's a separate that is separate right right absolutely we've, we've talked about having a firewall between uh coaching conversations which are like 99 percent of your conversations and the and the conversation where it's like hey you know we're not seeing progress here maybe you know maybe we need to do something about this because you know people when you come into a coaching situation you need to be vulnerable and if you're sort of like expecting like the supportive conversation and it's like hey maybe this isn't working out <laughs> that's not going to create that vulnerability space so yeah. i think one of the things that so this is an example i think one of the things i like about what we just did here is that you can visualize these things right and i think we'll, we'll go back and and um revise them a little bit and see which ones are overlapping. Uh, we've got what, seven of them here. You know, ideally if we can get them down to five, so maybe combining a couple here with this idea that we um, have it, you know, I could I could step into a space. I could listen to you on a call, Wade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I could say, okay, yeah, he's doing these things. Here's the things that he's doing or that he yeah. needs to support on. Or, and, and you could do the same with me. Yeah, absolutely. Because we know that these are the things that are making us excellent. Absolutely. So I'm just going to go back to our uh, slideshow here and just again um, show this process, you know, choosing that core value. This is what we did. Brainstorming, recording those descriptions, uh, organizing them, which uh, we haven't we haven't done that, but you can sort of see where we were headed in that. Uh, we wanted to combine a couple down and make slightly fewer ones. Um, I think uh, we're going to have a conversation after this, but I think for the most part, we're already in agreement about um, what these core values are. And we got to keep revisiting them. Yep. I love it. All right. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us for another workshop. Um, we hope this is helpful for you because we really are. Uh, this is such a powerful thing. And so it, it's so easy to do this and then let it fall by the wayside. So if, if you do nothing else, figure out a way to make this sticky. And yeah. that's what we think about all the time is, is how to make it sticky. And that's where we think software can be really helpful you need a way to track this stuff and make sure that it's coming back up, that it's a focus area of your conversations, because the less you make it part of how you operate, you might as well just keep going the way things are. Yeah, absolutely. And it, as we always say, you know, try these things out. You know, we, we phrase these as an exercise, try them out. Let us know if it's working. Let us know if it isn't working. You know, we, part of our goal here is to like, put this out, you know, our thinking out to the world. Yeah. The way, we, the way we check ourselves is finding out if it works with other people. So let us know. Yes. We've had people from all sorts of places. We've had guests from Malaysia, from here in the U.S., from all over the place. Um, we have, you know, customer getting customers started in Brazil right now and hopefully another one in China. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, this is just a super, super amazing uh, way that it applies to so many people and it really just it's a human thing and so if we can excel at it in a leadership way there's amazing things that can happen all right thanks everybody be well thanks everyone